Hi everybody, welcome to Annealing Under the Microscope Part 5. This has turned into a way bigger project than we ever thought it would be. It's going to be done in three parts. The first part is going to be done here in the lab, where we're going to be comparing the dimensional differences between annealed cases and unannealed cases over extended firings. In fact, it's going to be over more than 20 shots with each case, taking those measurements. The second and third stages of the project are going to be finding out what the real world results of that uh, is on paper. We're going to be measuring standard deviations and extreme spreads. We're going to be looking at group sizes. We're going to have multiple shooters, some of the best shooters in the world, doing that testing for us. But it all starts with great brass. How do we get that dimensional accuracy every time? That's what this part of the project is all about. We've already recorded a vast amount of data. As you can see here, this is the, the data recorded from just one case out of a series. This is the Unanneal series, and we did this is case one, case two, case three extends out here. The annealed cases, we did exactly the same data. What we'll do now is we'll walk you through the process and show you how we recorded that data. The first thing you'll notice is we're not using really highly technical equipment. In fact, anyone with a set of uh, with a micrometer and a set of verniers can do these tests. They just need a whole lot of patience. This is a cartridge straight out of the gun. Still got the primer on it. The first thing we're going to do is deprime it so that we can get accurate readings of the shoulder bump. Now we've got the primer out. Now the first measurement we will take is the shoulder bump. The next measurement we'll take is the fire formed neck dimension straight out of the gun. We'll, we'll do multiple readings of that to get the best average. The third dimension we'll take is measuring the head and we'll again take multiple readings of that to ensure that we've got a true number. After we've done all the fire formed dimensions the next step is annealing. We'll turn the kneeler on Select Aztec, we'll select Run, and the last code we're using was the correct code for this particular Peterson brass, which is code 0115. We're ready to go, and we're annealing. Now to save time, normally you just let this cool down, but to save time for this, we're going to just use a moist cloth just to cool the case down. Now, the next stage is sizing. We'll be doing our sizing with a Reading full length sizing die with, with bushings. Now, we'll be using an expander ball in this particular uh, experiment, but you could do it without an expander as well. We put that together. We're also using a Forster coax press, which we found just gives great results. So easy to use and with this, this die has already been preset to give us exactly a 2,000 shoulder bump with annealed cases. Now, in order to prep the brass and get it ready, lubing is essential. We've had our best results by firstly giving the case a light brush inside to just remove the carbon, or just um, disturb the carbon. We then use imperial um, dry media in order to treat and uh, lube the inside of the case. We found it's not very effective on the outside, in fact we're going to wipe off the excess from the outside, but it does a great job of lubing the inside, which is important when you're using an expander. We then use imperial sizing wax, and it's important to use plenty of this, or enough of it, too much is bad, but you must use enough, otherwise you get a false sizing. We then into the die, and then the next stage is to remove all of that lube. The last thing we wanted to get that in the gun. Now we're ready to re-measure the case. Firstly, we will re-measure the neck outside diameter. Again, taking multiple readings, we found that this particular dimension was incredibly accurate and repeatable with our Neil brass. We'll also re-measure the case head to see if that has sized correctly and from our records you'll see that yes it has. We'll also measure the case shoulder bump 
to check that we have indeed got our tooth out of shoulder bump. And lastly, we'll measure the case length so we can check and see what the trim requirements are going to be. So that whole process constitutes the data you see entered in one row here of one case. We've done that 60 times plus to complete the data you see in this first stage of the project. You'll find there's some really interesting results in this. We'll show full data as in this stage of the project and the next stage will be the actual real world shooting.